Well, then the question may arise, uh, what happens then when we do sin? Because all of us sin. We're, we're not perfect. Uh, Jesus makes us perfect so we can seek perfection. He makes us holy so we can seek holiness. Uh, but we're not going to be totally uh, righteous. We're not going to be totally holy of ourselves. It's only through the grace of Christ, and therefore it cannot be of, of works. Well, uh, if we do sin, and you can see this here also on the chart, that's what this little downward line means, you can see we're still in covenant with God. We're, we're still in that covenant relationship. Grace always meets us at our faith. It's always by grace uh, through our faith. But if we choose to sin, which this downward line uh, represents, uh, then we need to know that uh, God's grace will reach us perhaps in the form of discipline. Uh, we're told in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 4 through 6, uh, it says there, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he scourges every son whom he receives. So if we do choose to sin, and we will all sin from time to time, and don't tell me you don't because all sin, um, uh, well, then God may choose through his grace to exercise his discipline in our lives, uh, just like a father would to his son. He loves us. As a matter of fact, if we're not disciplined by God, we, we have something to worry about uh, because he's, you know, we're not in a relationship with him. But because we are in a covenant relationship with God, uh, when we do choose to sin through his grace, uh, God may choose to discipline us. Hmm. Uh, but it all depends, you know, if we repent, perhaps not, or perhaps he will, and, but not as much as we deserve. And that brings me to another part of this chart, that if we will, just as long as we continue to repent, which is what a uh, saving faith is, then it shows here that through God's grace, that God will meet us with forgiveness, his grace, in other words. And that's what that line represents. We're getting back on track again, okay? So um, if we do sin, if we will confess our sins, uh, God will forgive us. And that's what we're reminded of by John in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, which says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I just love that verse because we all sin. And uh, it just shows that if we will just continue to act in repentance or live a life of faith, uh, if we continue to trust God, we continue to love him um, and, and uh, confess our sins and continue to confess him uh, and, and seek, his, seek his obedience in our lives, which is what a faith is. Not that we're saved by works again, but uh, we're saved so that we might uh, seek God out. If we'll just continue to do that, then when we do sin, all we have to do is confess our sins and he's faithful and just and he'll forgive us our sins. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So you can see that assurance there. You know, uh, it's, 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 not, uh, uh, it's, it's not an easy thing to, for a person to walk out of the covenant with God. But now it is possible, and I have to go into that part of it, and that's what this lower part of the chart here shows us, according to scripture, uh, that that's what apostasy is. Uh, that's what the sin unto death is, according to Scripture. Uh, there is a sin unto death. Uh, what Scriptures point this out? Second Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 22. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 6, real quickly. First of all, Second Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 22 says, For if, after they have escaped the defilements of this world, by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that is, you, you had a, a relationship, you had knowledge of him, they are again entangled in them and are overcome. Now, that's a key phrase. Not that you get entangled and you confess and get out, but you, you get entangled like entangled by a rope and you, you're, you, can't, you can't get out of it. You're overcome. You become reprobate of mind, like we're told in Romans chapter 1. The last state has become worse than the first, Peter tells us. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn away from the holy commandment handed on to them. 
It has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit, and a sow after washing returns to wallowing in the mire. Um, so basically what Peter's telling us is that if you, if you become overcome by that sin, entangled and overcome, uh, you know, like, like a dog returning to, you know, it, what it spewed out, <laughs> or to a, a pig going back and wa wallowing in the mire again, you're just totally overcome and, re and of reprobate mind. That can be a sin unto death. So if you've sinned and you've sinned and you've confessed and confessed, you haven't committed that. Um, it's only when a person leaves Christ, uh, when they become overcome back into that sin, uh, where you would have to worry about something like that. But it is possible, according to this, this scripture. It talks about that, of course, is Hebrews chapter 6, verses, verses 4 through 6, uh, which simply tells us, or the author of Hebrews, Hebrews tells us, for in the case of those who have who have once been enlightened, in other words, they're, they're knowledgeable about God again and his covenant, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, the Holy Spirit, and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. I, I think that's uh, someone who's come to a relationship with God through a covenant. And then have fallen away. And then we take Peter's words, you have to become overcome. It is impossible to renew them again to repentance since they, again, crucified to themselves the Son of God. Again, crucified to themselves the Son of God. That means they, they had a relationship with God through Jesus, and then they've totally rejected that, and they've been overcome, like Peter tells us. Uh, and, and, and put the Son of God to an open shame. For the ground that drinks the rain which often falls on it, that's what God nourishes us through his word and the Holy Spirit, uh, and brings forth vegetation useful for those uh, for whose sake it is also tilled, receives a blessing of God. In other words, you become a fruitful Christian, like the parable of the sower teaches us. But, in contrast to this, if it yields thorns and thistles, no fruit, uh, it is worthless and close to being cursed, close to being cursed, because it, you still have time to repent, and then it ends up being burned in the end. So, basically, what the, what the scriptures are teaching us is that it is possible to uh, commit an apostasy. It is possible uh, that you could have a sin in your life that, that you get to become entangled in and then overcome by, even though you were once a Christian, and that the result of that will be destruction. The result of that will be separation uh, from God. In other words, there is a sin unto death, and so that's what that says. But again, it's going to be very, very difficult for that to happen because of God's mercy and his grace. The Holy Spirit's going to work against that sin in your life, try to free you from that, always trying to get you to repent. You might be near to judgment, but you can always repent. So I hope that if you are becoming entangled in some sin, that you you know pray to God and you do your best through faith to Repent, confess your sin, and get out of that, and continue in your faith. Now, this, and if you do so, that will lead to eternal life. And of course, we have John 3, 16, for it says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in him, you have faith, the trusting belief, the works of love and obedience, you will have eternal life. That's the main promise, and there are many other promises as well, but that's the main promise. In any case, uh, this is... Uh, how the covenant works, and I hope this uh, pictorial chart will help you to understand that, because I believe there are a lot of Christians today that don't understand uh, the new covenant, which is a compact uh, from God to man, and we enter in by faith. It's like a marriage. Uh, God has, has done for us what needed to be done, but we have to accept his invitation uh, by faith. We have to say, I do to him uh, in marriage uh, by trusting him and being willing to love him and others and confessing him before others and seeking his obedience uh, in our lives. And, but if we do sin, we confess our sins and we can't lose as a result of that. Uh, the question is, have you put your faith in Jesus? Are you living for him? Join in his covenant, a new covenant. Now, that means we're not under the old covenant. 
We're not, we don't have to observe the Sabbath. Uh, we, we don't have to observe all the, the ceremonial ordinances and the feast and all that stuff. We're under a new covenant, which is a covenant of faith and love. And that love leads to obedience, which fulfills the morality of the old covenant. And the old covenant is filled with stories of faith that we can go back to. And not only that, but the law and prophets and all the evidence that shows uh, that Jesus really was God's son who was sent to this earth. But nonetheless, we're under a new covenant uh, as Christians. And I hope that you have made your choice to enter into a covenant with God. Because if, if you don't, uh, have faith in God. What do you have faith in? Some standard. I mean, everybody in the world's got a different standard that they live by. And then there's no hope. There's no hope uh, with with all the standards of this world. In any case, if you have not put your faith in Jesus yet, I hope you will do that. I hope that this um, study on covenant has maybe opened your eyes a little bit, your understanding, your hearts uh, to God and, and how we can have a relationship with him. Uh, in any case, that's it for today, and I uh, hope that uh, you'll come back to listen to me again sometime. Thank you.